what's up everybody this is tech g back with another video to help you successfully pass the comptia tech plus certification exam so let's get into it in this video we're going to dive deep into fundamental data types and their characteristics these data types are essential building blocks in computer programming and understanding them is key for anyone preparing for the comptia tech plus exam by the end of this video you'll have a clear understanding of characters strings numbers and boolean values and we'll explore what each of these data types represents how they're used in different programming languages and their importance in computing. So before we jump into specific data types, let's talk about what a data type actually is. In computing, a data type defines the kind of data a variable can hold. It's a classification that tells a computer how to interpret the information stored in memory. And different programming languages might implement data types in slightly different ways, but the core concepts remain consistent. So why do data types matter? Because they define the operations that can be performed on the data. They specify memory usage as different data types require different amounts of memory, and they help with error checking by ensuring that operations are performed or compatible types of data. Now, let's dive into the different fundamental data types, starting with the char or character. The first fundamental data type we'll look at is char, and that stands for character. So a character, this is any single letter, number, punctuation mark, or symbol. In programming, the character data type stores exactly one character, and it can hold characters like alphabet letters, digits, and special characters like punctuation. And its characteristics are as follows. So the first one is size. So typically, a character requires one byte of memory, but this can vary by language and encoding. Another character Characteristic is representation. Characters are often enclosed in single quotes. So for example, the letter A in single quotation marks, this is a character. And then they're also represented by ASCII and Unicode. So characters are stored using encoding standards like ASCII or Unicode. In ASCII, each character is represented by a number. So for example, the character A is represented by the number 65. And the use case for a character is text processing. So characters are widely used in text processing. So for example, in a word processor, each letter is stored as a character. Now let's talk about strings. So a string is essentially a sequence of characters. So where a character stores just one character, a string can store multiple characters in a sequence. So think of it as a word, a sentence, or even an, an entire document. So here are the characteristics of strings. So the first characteristic is size. So the size of a string depends on the number of characters it holds. So for example, the string hello, this consists of five characters and requires at least five bytes of memory. Then we have representation. So strings are typically enclosed in double quotes. So for example, you have hello world, that is a string. Then we have null terminated strings. So in some languages like C, strings are null terminated, meaning they end with a special character that indicates the end of the string. And another characteristic is immutability. So in some programming languages like Python, strings are immutable, meaning once they are created, their content cannot be changed. Instead, operations on strings result in the creation of new strings. And the use cases for strings are the following. So they store text. So strings are used whenever we need to store text, such as user input, file content, or website data. And then there's string manipulation. So strings often come with built-in functions that allow us to manipulate them, like finding their length, concatenating them, or converting to upper and lower case. So strings can be much longer than just a few characters, and they are used in virtually every program to handle text data. Now let's move on to numbers. And first, we're going to talk about integers. So an integer, which is often abbreviated as INT, this is a data type that represents whole numbers. And these numbers can be positive, negative, or zero, but they cannot contain any decimal points. And the characteristics of an integer are as follows. So the size of an integer can vary based on the system in the programming language. And typically, an integer takes up four bytes or 32 bits of memory. However, there are variations like short and long integers they use less or more memory. Another characteristic is the range of integers depends on the size. So for example, in a 32-bit system, an integer can range from negative 2.1 billion all the way up to 2.1 billion. And then another characteristic is the operation. So integers, they support basic arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. 
And some of the use cases of integers are as follows. So integers are often used in loops where we need to count iterations or keep track of an index in a list or an array. And integers are also used in mathematical calculations. So whenever whole numbers are involved in calculations, integers are used. All right, next let's discuss what is called a floating point number or simply a float. So a float, this is the data type used to represent real numbers that contain decimal points. These numbers can be positive or negative and they allow for fractions of a whole number. And the characteristics of a float are as follows. So a float typically uses four bytes of memory or 32 bits. And some languages also support a double data type, which uses eight bytes or 64 bits for more precision. And then float are less precise than integers due to the way they are stored in memory. And this can lead to rounding errors in very large or very small numbers. Also, floats support arithmetic operations similar to integers, but also handle decimal values. And some of the use cases for floats are as follows. So floats are used when precision with decimal points is necessary, such as in financial calculations or scientific simulations. And also in programs that need to handle measurements like height, weight, or speed, floats are commonly used. So understanding the difference between integers and floats is critical for ensuring the right data type is used when dealing with numbers. And finally, let's talk about the Boolean data type. So a Boolean, this represents a binary value, either true or false. And this data type is used primarily for logical operations and decision making in programs. And the characteristics of Boolean are as follows. So a Boolean usually requires one bit of memory as it only needs to represent two values, either the number one, which stands for true, or the number zero, which stands for false. Also, Boolean values are used in logical operations like and, or, and not. And also, in many programming languages, Boolean values are used in conditional statements, such as if, while, or for loops. Now, some of the use cases for Boolean are as follows. So, Booleans are most commonly used in decision-making processes. So, for example, when you check whether a user is logged in, the result is either true or false. Also, in loops and conditionals, Booleans help control the flow of a program based on whether conditions are met or not. So essentially, Booleans are critical for writing programs that make decisions based on conditions. And on your screen right here is an example of Boolean used in the Google search algorithm. So if you went into Google and you typed up the following stating that you're looking for toys, you might get 244 results. If you typed into Google that you're looking for cars, you might get 300 results. However, if you typed into Google, you are looking for toys and cars, you might get 10 results. If you typed in, you're looking for toys or cars, you might get 400 results. And if you typed in, you're looking for toys, not cars, you might get 200 results. But then at the bottom here, we have Boolean that's expressed as an algebraic equation. So if X equals one and Y equals one, then X and Y equals one. Another expression, if X equals one or Y equals zero, then X or Y equals one. And then we have X equals zero, and that's not equal to X equaling one. So to recap, in this video, we've covered the fundamental data types. We talked about char, and that's used for storing single characters. We talked about strings, and that's used for storing sequences of characters. We talked about integers for whole numbers. We talked about floats for decimal numbers. And we talked about Booleans for logical true and false values. So each of these data types has a specific role in computing and is crucial to understand when writing and debugging programs. Mastering these concepts will help you succeed not only in the CompTIA a tech plus exam but also in your overall understanding of programming and computer systems all right now with all of that said let's do some check on learning so which of the following data types is best used to store a single character would it be integer would it be string would it be a char or would it be a float and of course the correct answer is char so the char data type is used to store a single character such as the letter a or the number five and it is typically one byte in size next question which data type would be most appropriate for storing a value of 3.14 would it be an integer a char boolean or a float and the correct answer is float. So the float data type is used to store decimal numbers such as 3.14. 
And our final question, what is the primary purpose of a Boolean data type? Is it to store numeric values, to store textual data, to store true or false values, or to store a single character? And of course, the correct answer is it is to store true or false value. So the Boolean data type is used to represent two states, typically true or false. It is often used in conditions and control structures in programming.